back up with God people it's time for another one of these classic album little series I do like once a month and uh, boy this time it's House of the Holy man I love this album I bought this right here the deluxe box that brings a uh, bunch of shit cool book and stuff and this which is a different mix some of these songs are instrumental like uh well, this song remains the same and um, rain song a lot of these and some there's some vocals on it but man some of these songs instrumentally are amazing especially my favorite uh, no quarter uh, on here as far as the inst uh, songs without instrumental well before I go into it this album cover here uh, was done by uh, first time they worked with Led Zeppelin Hi Hypnosis who did like album covers for Scorpions Love Drive and uh, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, iconic, and uh, I believe um, Wish You Were Here, one of the pictures in that, or maybe all the pictures. Don't quote me on none of this shit. I'm just saying, I'm just going on what I read online now about this album. And also what I uh, read online was Rolling Stone magazine, the elitist uh, douchebags, uh, some guy reviewed it and said it was the dullest, most confusing album he's ever heard. Uh, you know, normally, I'm all for, you know, people's musical taste. I, I respect it. If you hate this album, that's your deal. I have no problem with you. I respect it. You don't like it. But Rolling Stone Magazine is the exception because those douchebags never gave Led Zeppelin a favorable review in the 70s. And they, they put them in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now that time has gone by and they see they remain popular and legends. Oh, oh, we pretend to like them now. Let them in the Rock Hall Fuck those guys, man. Fuck Rolling Stone magazine. Um, and uh, this is not my favorite. This one's my favorite album from Led Zeppelin. Uh, House of uh, Physical Graffiti, but How the Holy would be like a close second. There's some songs that were recorded on this album that ended up on Physical Graffiti, like uh, The Rover, which is probably my favorite song off Physical Graffiti. I have to think about that. A wonton song, The Rover. Those are my favorite tracks on there. Um, I believe the title track, How's the Holy, uh, was recorded at this time. I could be wrong. And uh, Black uh, Country Woman, maybe. And a song called Walter's Walk that ended up on Coda, which I don't like that song. So thank God that didn't make this album. It would have douched it up. Even though there is one song I don't like off this album, I, I just don't. I, I never will. I've lived with this album for decades. I think I bought this album in 1978. Not this one, obviously. This is from the box set. But I've, I've lived with this for over 40 years. And if I can't get into that one song now, I never will. But I'll talk about it when we get to it. Uh, the opening track is... Uh, the song remains the same, man. What an amazing, great opening. And plus, man, look how cool that is. I love the artwork on this. And the cover is of really of two kids. And they superimpose them, you know, doing different poses all over the album, but it's really just two kids. And they had a very difficult time doing this, uh, this uh, album cover. They said it was raining a lot, and they would try to get there at four in the, five in the morning to get the, the sunrise view, but I don't know. They, it took them ten days to do this album cover. And, um, and, I, I, you know, I posted on my Facebook, uh, like, I don't know, several, maybe like a year ago. I think I posted No Quarter or something off this album. And Facebook, like, like threw me in jail for it because I was showing nudity. I'm like, really? And then soon after, I guess it happened to many other people, and there was a lot of controversy, and they came down on Facebook. So now you can, everybody out there on Facebook, you can post this. They, they'll, they'll let you now. <sighs> but anyway, so, uh, and this is the last album to appear on Atlantic Records before it went to Swan Song, which was a part of Atlantic Records, but this is the last one that was just strictly Atlantic Records. And uh, what else do I have to say about this? Um, I know I was already getting into the songs and I went back to the album cover. This uh, packaging of this album was, um, was uh, I believe, nominated for a Grammy. And you know what? Who gives a fuck? The Grammy are clueless. But, you know, at least, uh, at least they're kind of Bobo-ish. 
And this is the first Led Zeppelin album that contains all the lyrics, all the songs. I think the only album that had lyrics was uh, Stairway to Heaven on the last album. This one has all the lyrics to every song. And nowhere on this album it says House of the Holy or the band members. Uh, does it say it on the, this? I don't even think it says it on here. No. But, um... Yeah, all right, we'll get back in the song. Song remains the same. What a ripping song. Originally, um, I think Jimmy Page called it the overture. And then uh, Robert Plant wrote it about, you know, being on the road. And I think they called it then, oh, I forgot, the campaign, I think. Then it ended up being the song remains the same, which remained on the set list all the way to the end. There's three songs on this album that remain on the set list all the way for their whole career. And um, it's just an amazing song. They named the movie after it. And I'll get into the movie when we talk about No Quarter. Um, and the uh, song remains the same, man. It's just so heavy and fast and ripping. And then it goes into those dreamy type, you know, verses. And then back into the ripping. What a great opening track. I would say it's my favorite opening track off any Led Zeppelin album. One of my favorite Legends Up songs. I would definitely have to put it like in the top five. Uh, all right, and then we go into the Rain song. Man, I think the Rain song may be the best song on here. It is, I don't know, what Jimmy Page does on that song, it kind of like transcends music for me. It takes me into another, like, you know, zone, man. Just the riffage, you know, and it was inspired by George Harrison. Who said Led Zeppelin never wrote ballads, which is odd because, I mean, Battle Evermore is kind of ballady and uh, Thank You from Led Zeppelin 2. They had uh, quite a few ballads, if you ask me. But, um, Babe, I'm going to leave you. But uh, the first chords on the, the, the way this song opens, he used, Jimmy Page uses the same chords as uh, the song Something, the George Harrison song that appears on Abbey Road. I don't know, I guess a little nod to him but I gotta say man thank you George Harrison for inspiring such a majestically amazing song like I said it's just not like a song to me kind of transcends it it's so gorgeous it's so beautiful and the lyrics you know oh god I love I love 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 rain song it's like I would say I don't know if we keep going on man it's very close to to song remains the same. I mean, it's such a one-two punch. The next song is Over the Hills and Far Away. I don't have to look at the damn uh, thing, but it's right here in front of me. Over the Hills, Far Away, which is written by Page and Plant. So far, all the songs have been written by Page and Plant, but that soon changes, uh, starting with the next song. But um, Over the Hills, Far Away, it's a song about, like, you know, the hippie movement, those dirty hippies that don't shower. No offense to you hippies out there. That's fine. You want to be a hippie? More power to you. But don't get near me if you haven't showered. You know, P.U. Jeez, man. Like Gore said, how do you hide money from a hippie? You put it under a bar of soap. But, um, psh. but yeah, Over the Hills and Far Away. Another beautifully great acoustic intro. And the way Plant sings, it's so mellow. But then it, da -da 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 -da, it gets heavy. Love Plank's voice on that, man, the way he hits those notes. and It's just so majestic. And and, uh, and just the way Jimmy Page would not only construct songs, but the way he would produce it with the great Eddie Kramer. You hear me, Kiss fans? Eddie Kramer had something to do with this album, too. It was recorded in a lot of different places. Um, with the, you know, the, what was it? The um, Mobile Studio, Rolling Stone Mobile Studio. Some of it was recorded in... Uh, uh, Mick, Mick Jagger's uh, ho home in uh, Wilshire, I believe. I might be getting some of this wrong. Hey, I'm just a bobo here on uh, Miami Beach on YouTube. But I'm just going with what I just read a little while ago. So I'm pretty sure I'm right. But yeah, it's a great song. It's a radio staple. Played a lot. I don't get sick of it. I don't get sick of Stairway to Heaven, please. Stairway to Heaven to me is my favorite Led Zeppelin song, and I own every Led Zeppelin album. I know it's not cool to say, if you're a Zeppelin fan, you're going to pick something like, you know, something off here, 
No, Stairway to Heaven is so popular. You're not. No, no. To me, that song is perfection. If it comes on the radio, I will bitch slap you if you try to change the station. So don't hang around me if Led Zeppelin Stairway to Heaven ever comes on the radio. Um, and this song's the same way. I love this song. It comes on the radio. I want to hear it. Next song, The Crunge. Here's where Bonham has a lot of input. He plays the song. He plays the drums like purposely to, uh, so it's a song you can't dance along to because it's kind of like, you know, offbeat. It's a weird time signature. But, you know, Jones, Page, and Plant, the whole band has something to do with this. And uh, Robert Plant kind of like goofs a little bit on uh, James Brown with, uh, I forgot the James Brown song, something Bridge, uh, where he does that. Have you seen the bridge? That's the song on here I can't get into. I've tried, man. I've tried, but there's the crunch, man. Once Over the Hills and Far Away is on, it's time for me to flip that over, that album over. Not into it. I know a lot of people love the crunch. You know, it's just not my thing. But it's cool how Zeppelin would explore different musical, because it does have that funk feel. I love a lot of funk, you know, but not this song. Now we flip the album over to Dancing Days, and Eddie Kramer said, when, after they, they finished recording and they were listening to the final mix, Led Zeppelin were out in the garden dancing around to this song. So I thought I'd throw that in here. Uh, this song is, again, just Page and Plant that wrote it. I uh, believe, um, no, I was about to say House of the Holy. Forget that part. But uh, it's a great song. I really do love it. It's a great opening to this uh, second track. Da -na 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 -na. Ba -na 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 -na. It's just so infectious, man. Led Zeppelin were, they were very special. They, to me, are rated perfectly right. People that say Led Zeppelin's overrated, hey, man, that's your opinion. Not mine. Perfectly rated because they were a majestically amazing band that wasn't afraid to explore different boundaries of music. But here they kept it, you know, nose to the grindstone, heavy, Melodic killer. Next song, uh, Jamaica. I think I'm pronouncing it right. It's it's spelled Dire Maker, but it's Jamaica or something like that. And there's where Bonham had a lot to do with it too. This is everybody in the band contributed to this song. Uh, another radio staple. I know many of my friends hate this song. I love it mainly because of Bonham's playing on it. It's just so killer how he plays this song and all those, you know, breaks and little fills and stuff. Amazing song, very uh, reggae-ish. Here they're exploring a little reggae. And uh, Jimmy Page wanted this to be the first single. John Paul Jones wasn't happy with it. He thought uh, they, were, they should have taken the song more serious. He's probably right. John Paul Jones, the fucking genius. You know, he's overlooked from Page and Plant. And, you know, even Bonham, but John Paul Jones, man, uh, which has a lot to do with the next song. But uh, I love, uh, I love it. I know it's goofy. Oh, 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 oh. I think that's what pissed John Paul Jones off. But I love the damn song. The next song is called No Quarter. This, this one was worked on on the fourth album, but it wasn't really complete. So they kind of scrapped it for this one. John Paul Jones was a mastermind on this song, but, you know, Page and Plant uh, also contributed to it. But uh, when they came to work on this album, you know, John Paul Jones added, like, some acoustic piano parts and stuff like that. And then they really worked on it, and it's a definite masterpiece. I was listening to this today, and for a while I've been going around saying, Man, No Quarter is awesome. And I am not the biggest fan of Song Remains the Same. I told you I was going to bring this album up during this. But the version of No Quarter on Song Remains the Same, listening to the studio version now, I was thinking, damn, why do I like the live version more? This is perfect as it is. But then I thought about it. I go, you know what it is? The live version has that extended solo with John Paul Jones and Jimmy Page. And it's not boring. I, what is it, like 10 minutes long, 8 minutes long? I don't know. It's a long-ass version. And to me, it's the highlight 
of Saw remains the same. I guess I prefer that version more because it's longer and it doesn't bore me. But, A, condensed, it's awesome. It's amazing. There's no complaints I have about this amazing studio track. No quarter. And, uh, and it was, and, and you know, Lex Zeppelin was just so mysterious, you know, with uh, Jimmy Page owning uh, Aleister Crowley's house. He had a black magic bookstore. And, you know, there's a lot of controversy and mystery going on behind Led Zeppelin. And these lyrics, man, you know, mysterious, like, you know, the, what is it? I, I know there's a little satanic shit in here in this song. Um, let's see where the hell it is. The devil mocks, isn't there? Yeah, the devil mocks it or every strap. The, uh, the, the snow drives back the foots that slow. The dogs of doom are, how, uh, are howling more. I mean, it's so eerie. And even, you know, the way Plant phrases it with the, you know, somber piano keyboard work from John Paul Jones, it's just like Rain Song. It's, it transcends music to me. It's just so amazingly awesome. All right, then we end with um, we end with the ocean, and this one's contributed by all four members. If you listen to the beginning, John Bonham says, "We done four four already, and now we're steady, and here we go." Something like that. He says that because they already did four takes, so I would guess that's the fifth take ripping song this song uh plant said it's about the audience the the fans you know the the, the you know the, the dedication of the fans they had back then you know Led Zeppelin were ginormous by this point you know they may be bigger now but back then they were filling stadiums my brother went to go see them and uh what was I believe the biggest concert draw concert of that time which was in Tampa. I believe it could have been Presence Tour, maybe? Um, it had to be. It, had to, it couldn't have been um, In Through the Outdoor. In Through the Outdoor, I was already into Zeppelin. I bought In Through the Outdoor when it was new. There was rumors of them coming here. Fuck, it wasn't even rumors. They already had tickets, you know, sold in Chicago and places like that. And, you know, the, the radio stations down here were building up like Zud Zeppelin will be coming to Florida. And I was like, yeah, I'm finally going to see Zeppelin. And John Bonham passed away. But uh, back to the ocean. I love this song. And I love that little acapella thing in the middle. Nah, 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 nah. And again, Bonham's drumming on this album, on this song and album. Just, man, there was nobody like Bonham, man. I mean, shit, even if you hate Led Zeppelin, you cannot deny the greatness of his drumming. Hey, one of my ex-drummers hated Zeppelin, and he even said it. I don't like Zeppelin, but Bonham was great. You can't deny it. You can't deny it. Anybody that says that Bonham was not a good drummer, honestly, I respect anybody's opinion, but I can't respect an idiot. But that's it. Uh, and right here, I'm looking, man. There's no mention of any, you know, who played drums and bass. There's no mention of that. But it does mention Eddie Kramer uh, and, you know, a host of other people. And uh, Peter Grant and Sleeve by Hypnosis. So they do give some credit here. Oh, no, right here at the end, it does say who plays on what. Durr. And I thought, no, I thought it didn't. And as you see on the album cover, it doesn't say Led Zeppelin or House of the Holy. When they released this album on CD in the 80s, it had a little thing here that said House of the Holy. I don't remember if it said Led Zeppelin or not. But there you go. That's my uh, thing on Houses of the Holy. Phenomenal album. Even though if I don't like the crunch, all those other songs make up for that one song that, you know, just does not sit well with these years. Thank you for watching everybody. If you want to donate, I got a PayPal below. And uh, subscribe if you like if you like what you see and click that little bell for notifications. Till next time, schmack em a gob. Hey check out my podcast, The Vieira Vault, on Spreaker, YouTube, and iTunes. Subscribe. The links are below.
looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, Rat Sound Review Network has plenty of shows to choose from. Like Rat Sound Review, where they discuss the latest rock and metal news, as well as interviews and albums. Album vs. Album, the King Diamond Podcast, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and sometimes this guy. Smack him a gob! Ralph Vieira is also on our network with the Vieira Vault. There's also Old Man Metal's Musings, where he discusses heavy metal and beer. Music is Life with Lou Mavs. The Right Opinion for Those Who Love Politics. A South Park podcast called Suck My Balls. The Infinite Fringe. A watch-along wrestling show called Beyond Bushido. Ex Stradivarius guitarist, the Timo Tolki podcast. And the great Harry Barnett with I Don't Even Like Podcasts. So check out RatSaddleReview.com or search Review on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and more.